past week or so, I've been able to test out Snapper's 20 inch battery powered snowblower on a variety of conditions here on the property. I recorded a lot of the footage of me clearing the snow, but the more important thing I wanted to share with you is my first impressions over this machine. Apparently my cats want to share their impressions as well. I think it's a pretty inexpensive tool, so I didn't really have a lot of uh, expectations for it. Although many of you aren't really in the market to buy an entry-level battery-powered snowblower, I do know that a lot of people are looking for this information, so I hope that it's helpful. To start out with, I think it's worth noting that this is one of the least expensive battery-powered high-voltage snowblowers. It's top of the line in terms of like voltage and like branding and whatnot, but it's really one of the most entry-level units that you can buy. I didn't really expect it to perform as well as some of the higher end machines, but to my surprise, this thing really actually cleared pretty much everything I, I threw at it over the course of the past week. Everything from shallow wet snow to deep fluffy stuff. And I had very minimal issues. Early in the week when we got our first snow, I was easily able to clear roughly one inches of very wet snow that was sitting on ground surface that hasn't really frozen. A little bit later in the week, we had a lot of ice on the ground and we had deep accumulation. This machine truly handled both of them perfectly fine. The deeper stuff really did take a lot of extra muscle on my part to get through it, and I did clog it a couple times, but I handled it. Now, I was surprised how clean it left the driveway when I used it on uh, snow that hadn't quite adhered itself to the pavement, like it hadn't frozen itself to the pavement yet but I also found that it was actually particularly hard to push it across the driveway because the sliders down here uh, it really like the abrasiveness of my driveway made it very hard to push it across when that base layer of ice wasn't there these uh, skid pads they're just kind of like these little slider things down here they're basically just a little piece of metal and although they slide really well over compacted snow and ice when they're actually sliding over your actual concrete or pavement, it's, uh, it's kind of like sliding across sandpaper. Now, certain pavements are going to be a little bit uh, easier probably to slide over, but my driveway, it was really kind of challenging. That extra friction involved, basically, and then the short stubbiness of the actual unit as I was pushing it occasionally would just kind of grab and kind of want to tip forward a little bit. It was really annoying, especially when I was going up my hill. Here, not so much, but when I was coming up the hill, it was particularly rough. Now, before I used this unit, I actually thought it was going to be pretty easy to push around because it is so small. It's only 20 inches wide. It's not very high. It's not very deep. It's not very heavy. But what I didn't realize is because of the dimensions of this thing, kind of this boxy shape that it has, it's just not as easy to push as I thought it was going to be. Now, aside from pushability and its shape, as I took this thing out of the box, I was thinking to myself, the blade down here, I had a lot of concerns about that blade. It's hard plastic. I was concerned that it was gonna not be durable enough. It would chip, it would crack, it would break. But after having used this a handful of times over the past week, I found it to be usable in most circumstances. In the fresh snow, it just like pounds through it, just like you would expect it to. However, as I got to like kind of chunks of ice and things, that things that just happen in your driveway all the time, uh, you know, it falls off the wheel, the wheel well of your truck or your car, or maybe uh, you get some snow melt along the side here and it just turns into these like ice chunks. These are the kinds of things that I'm still a little bit scared about. I did go over a good handful of them while using the machine. However, there's some of the bigger chunks and some of the bigger chunks that were particularly frozen to the pavement that even those, I didn't even want to test it because I don't want to damage the machine. Now, one thing I was excited about when using this was its uh, ability to handle deep snow. The spec sheet and kind of on the side of the box, it says that it can handle snow up to 10 inches. And that's roughly the, uh, the height of the blade there, this sort of like entrance chute. And the thing is, we don't usually get 10 inches of snow at any one time during a winter season where I live. However, we did manage to get quite a bit of snow over the past week. And I was able to put this up against an eight inch accumulation in parts of my, uh, in parts of my driveway. I was actually quite surprised that the machine was able to power through it just fine. I did clog it a couple times, but I do have a pretty big driveway. So that's not too crazy. What was important to note is that it was actually hard to push it through. It's not like it glided through it like a hot knife in butter. 
you had to really use some muscle to get it through and you kind of had to like do some like jolts to just kind of push it in and let it blow and push it in and let it blow if i continued to power through just pushing straight through uh, in one continuous motion, it would really start bogging down a little bit. The blade kind of slowed down as it was turning and uh, it just didn't perform as well. With that in mind, it's good to know that this is capable of handling those deeper accumulations, but it's really going to be better for smaller accumulations. Now, at no one point did I ever think to myself, man, this snowblower is throwing the snow a really long way. That just wasn't the case. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> it was throwing at a normal a normal to low amount and only when i was blowing like one inch snow like really thin layers of snow those were the only times that i really felt that the snow blower wasn't throwing the snow far enough now you're not going to get like you know 50 feet of snow throwing out of this thing it's a it's a small battery unit but it's going to be fine for the majority of people clearing off their sidewalks and their driveways. I do use the Snapper lawnmower and I think it's quite strong for a battery lawnmower and it uses the exact same battery. I'm finding out of this machine though that the power reserve, like it doesn't pull enough power to really power through the hard stuff really well. It'll get through it but just doesn't really excite you like the lawnmower does. What I do think, however, is that it's reserving some of that battery power for length of use. I used this a handful of times over the past week and the battery never ran out. Now I recharged it between snow blowing sessions, just like you should running any battery powered piece of equipment. So at some point the battery would run out if I wasn't recharging it, but only using the four amp hour battery, I was able to clear a lot of square footage and a lot of snow without having to deal with a battery that literally just died in the middle of the session. Now this snowblower is quite inexpensive for a battery powered snowblower. There are some less expensive gas powered ones for battery ones on the high end. They're gonna be significantly more expensive than this. I personally bought this from Lowe's website. I bought it packaged with the four amp hour battery and I spent about $510. If, however, you already have a battery, you can go onto Amazon, at least time of recording right now, you could get the tool only version of this for only 250 bucks. It was like 249 or something like that. If you don't have a battery and you don't have a large driveway, Lowe's website, at least yesterday when I, when I looked at it, they had a two amp hour battery available for $122. So if you were to package those things together, you could basically get this thing for a little over 370 bucks. For a high voltage battery powered snowblower, that is crazy cheap. Personally, with my large driveway, I don't think I could get through the whole thing on a two amp hour battery. So it's the four amp hour for me. If you don't have a big driveway and you don't get heavy accumulation all year long. I think this is an acceptable alternative to pulling out the old manual snow shovel because even though it might be a little bit harder to push across the ground, it's a lot easier than using the snow shovel. Now, I don't care what snow blower you use. I don't care if you're using a $5,000 piece of equipment. The best time to use a snow blower is on the fresh powder. If you can do it early in the day, you can get most of the snow removed and then you can put your ice melt down and hope for the rest of that compacted snow and ice on the bottom to burn off in the early afternoon. Now I have a full video all about what to do immediately after snow blowing. Make sure to watch that video. It's linked right up here in the upper corner. You can also see links to additional snow and ice clearing material that I have here on the channel linked down in the description below. And subscribers of this channel are going to see my full comparison of this to some other battery powered snow blowers in the coming weeks here on this channel. Make sure to use the comment box below if you have any questions. Thank you very much for your time.